My name's Reverend Mavis Curry, and I'm Mary's minister, and uh, I remember all of you from years past, and uh, so I welcome you to this service as we celebrate Mary's life today. I know these are unusual days, and this is a really difficult set of circumstances in which to say goodbye to someone as special as Mary Kelly. So I thought we might begin this service remembering uh, that while we're really a small number today, uh, we are surrounded by the prayers and the thoughts of many, many people who loved Mary. So I thought I might just read a few of the words of sympathy and remembrance that were shared online uh, this past week. This is from Barb Hubert. She's a member of our church and a friend of Mary's. She wrote, Mary was an awesome, caring lady. She put caring for others ahead of her own health. During the past two years, when I was very sick, and after my major surgery, Mary was always there for me. I know I wasn't the only one she was checking in on. She will be really missed by the people of Knox Presbyterian Church, as well as members of the Outreach Circle. Heaven got one of the great ones. And these words, our deepest condolences to the entire Kelly and Carmichael families. Mary was a wonderful lady that always had time for everyone. She genuinely cared and was interested in all of the activities and life moments of everyone she met. We will always remember Mary coming to the hospital to visit when both of our kids were born, and also Mary's hospitality to Mary Jo and newborn Emily during the 2016 Beef Barbecue at Pinafore Park. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Alexander, Emily, Mary Jo, and Rob Tate. In these words, I'm very sorry to hear of Mary's passing. I just spoke with her last week and was shocked to hear the news. The short time that I've known Mary, she was full of energy, always thinking of others and dropping by, even if only for a moment. She was always positive, supportive, awesome at remembering who to ask after and spoke to the point when needed. She will be especially missed by those closest to her. Thinking of you during this sad time. Love Wendy, Mark, Jason, Curtis, and Colin. Then these words. There are no words to express how I feel right now. Mary came into my life when I was a very troubled teen in the late 1960s. Len and Mary agreed to offer their home as a halfway house in a new program started by the STPU, and I was among the first patients to be housed. Many people here offering their condolences speak of Mary's loving kindness. I've never met a person that had such a lasting impact on my life than Mary Kelly. In a very short time, she showed me what it was like to live in a solid, loving, caring environment and ultimately put me on a solid foundation for the rest of my life. I have no doubt she is a child of God and is currently resting in God's peace. To the whole Kelly clan, I offer my sincere condolences and I share your grief. From Don Ross. And then these words. Mary and Len have been our neighbors for many years. They watched our babies grow up I worked with Mary at Steg for many years when she was a ward clerk in the ICU. A very dedicated lady, never to mince her words, and usually spot on with her comments. Always a wave when she drove down the street, occasionally stopping to catch up on the latest news around the neighborhood. Both her and Len will always be a great light in our memories. She is finally with Len, happy again. We will miss our funny, sweet Mary. Our deepest condolences to you, her family. Deborah, Ron, Trevor, Stephanie, and Juliana Bartlett. And those are just a few of the many, many tributes to Mary. So I think we need to remember all of those people who are surrounding us today at a distance as we celebrate our life. Let's worship God today. Let's begin by listening to the words of scripture. And these were the words that we heard almost five years ago when we celebrated Len's life, the words that began his service. 
near the words of the prophet. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you in my righteous right hand. God is our refuge and our strength and an ever-present help in times of trouble. The mountains and the hills, they might crumble, but God's love for us will never come to an end. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, in you we live and move and have our being. And in scripture, you remind us that nothing, not even death, can separate us from your love. Lord God, help us to recognize your presence with us now. Touch us in a very real way with your love and your comfort. Quiet our hearts and our minds as we remember Mary. And stir good memories and thankful hearts within us so that we can truly celebrate her life today in this place. Lord, be with those who feel this loss most deeply today. Stand alongside Mary's sons and their life partners. Be with each one of her much-loved grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Give your strength and your comfort to her brother. Be with her many, many friends. Lord God, give all of us your peace and your comfort. And remind us today of your ancient promises of eternal life. For we pray in the great name of Jesus, who is our Savior and our friend. Amen. Well, I know that one of the greatest gifts that Mary gave to all of you is the very deep sense of family. She had a deep love for everyone in that extended Kelly, Kelly clan. And she often talked about you to me. Her daughter-in-law, Julie, shares these words about Mary today. Dear Mary, so many years have come and gone since each of us married your sons, three, two, and one. Family was always so important to you. Now that you are gone, we are not sure what to do. Know that we will keep your values close in our hearts, because that's what you do when a loved one departs. Family values is what you have left, but your passing has left us all feeling bereft. Dear Mary, Mom, thank you so much for the wonderful son that each of us married, three, two, and one. We all wish you only peaceful thoughts and much love, as you are welcomed by Grandpa Len in heaven above. Please give him a hug and a whole lot of love. Now we turn our eyes to scripture. And I often think that there are some scripture lessons that just resonate with certain people. It's as if those passages were written for them or about them. And so the two passages that we'll listen to today are passages that remind me of Mary. And the first is from the Hebrew scriptures. The prophet, a man named Micah, he was reminding the people of God at the time what faith was really all about. They began to think that it was about offerings and about show and about burnt sacrifices. And Micah, he tries to remind them that those are not really what faith is all about. So let's listen to Micah chapter 6. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? God has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to act justly and to 
love kindly and to walk humbly with your God. Our second reading is a passage that we usually save in the church for Easter, for the month of April. It's a passage that talks about a woman named Mary, Mary Magdalene. She was one of Jesus' closest friends. And while the rest of the disciples were hidden away in grief and in fear, Mary Magdalene, we meet her at the beginning of this passage, trudging to the tomb. And she's carrying some herbs. She's the kind of woman who wants to be useful. She's not flashy, and so she goes alone to the tomb. When it's still dark, she commits an act of kindness and respect, laying these herbs at the grave. And in the midst of all of her grief, she encounters the risen Jesus, the first one to see Jesus. So let's listen to John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she ran to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I do not know where they have placed him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in and saw the strips of linen lying there, but he didn't go in. And Simon Peter came behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside, and he saw and he believed. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels dressed in white seated where Jesus' body had been. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I do not know where they have placed him. And at this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize him. And he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? What is it that you're looking for? And supposing he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. And then Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned toward him, and she cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, may this message be in the name of the Father, and for the sake of the Son, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, if I'm honest with you, I'd have to say that I was a little bit surprised when I read Mary's obituary. I was surprised because it said she was in her 88th year, and despite all of her health wo woes in the last year, in my head, she just was not that old. She was clever, and she was on the ball, and she seemed to be able to keep track of all of you in her head, plus all of these church ladies that she phoned and drive, drove and dropped things off at their homes on a regular basis. She had that really dry sense of humor, and I'm not sure if you've seen it, but sometimes I'd see that eye roll that I thought was the eye roll of a much younger woman. <laughs> it usually surfaced in the midst of a conversation about something that was exasperating her, or someone that was exasperating her. So she just didn't seem 88 to me. Mary was born in Aldborough Township on October 12, 1933, though. She was one of four children to James and Myrtle Carmichael. And I was so know she was always so grateful for her family, often speaking about her last remaining sibling, her twin, J.D. She always spoke about him with affection and worry and care. A dedicated nurse, Mary worked on the obstetrical floor here in St. Thomas and then finished her career as the ward clerk in the ICU. 
we know she was the mother of three sons and the grandmother of six grandsons and then the great-grandmother of five grandchildren. And she was the life partner and really the best friend to Len Kelly. And I think that's perhaps one of our greatest comforts today, that Len and Mary are together again at last. I always thought it was a privilege to be with Len those last months of his life and to see Mary's love and devotion to that man that she had married so many years ago. 500 years before Christ walked the earth, there was a Greek philosopher. He reflected on life and society and love and he wrote these words. He said, what we leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments. What we leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments. It is what is woven into the lives of others. What we leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments. It is what is woven into the lives of others. And I think Mary Kelly was gifted at weaving hope and compassion and love into the lives of others. You know, we, we listen to those words at the start of the service from friends and neighbors. And we listen to the words of Julie, her daughter-in-law. I think both Mary and Len had a way of weaving their lives into ours. And they changed, I think everyone they met, they changed their life a little bit for the better. So it's in faith that we gather today to commend Mary to the God that she worshipped in life. And I imagine Mary breathing easy again at last. I imagine her reunited with her family and her friends and with her beloved Len, with her grandson Bradley. And I think even in our sadness today, we dare in this place to give thanks to give thanks for the blessings that Mary so freely shared in her almost 88 years on this earth. We give thanks for her laugh and her stubborn independence. We give thanks for all of the small notes and cards and phone calls and encouragement and the hours and hours and hours that she invested in the people that she loved. And today, I think we are challenged I think we're challenged to think about our own legacies. And I think Mary is whispering to us that we need to make sure the legacy that we believe, leave behind is not one that's just engraved in stone, but woven into the lives of others. And so as we worship today, we imagine this new Mary hearing Jesus call her by name and welcome her home. Let us pray. Loving God, you are the giver of all good things. You are the source of life and every blessing. And so today we hold up to you our different good memories of Mary and we give you thanks. We thank you for her strength of character and for her love for family and for her long and happy marriage to Len. We hold up to you those who feel this loss most deeply. We pray for Alan and Julie, Wayne and Angela, John and Nancy. We remember each of the grandchildren and great-grandchildren. We pray for JD. We pray for Len's sister, Pauline. We hold up to you the many, many friends and neighbors who also grieve at a distance today. Lord God, where there is sorrow, bring comfort. Where there is worry, bring hope. And where there is doubt, faith. For we pray in the name of Christ. And now may the grace of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the 
fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with each of you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Just before our service ends today, we're, we're just going to take a moment to breathe and to listen together to uh, one of the great hymns of the church, one of Mary's favorite hymns, a hymn she would have sung many a Sunday uh, at our church and at Alma Street Church as well. Let's listen to Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but Show.